Hi everybody, it's Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and uh, tonight's featured video, I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about uh, building a machining fixture. This one came across my bench yesterday, kept me a little bit uh, busy and challenged, and I think you may learn a few things about not only uh, how a machinist thinks, but how a toolmaker thinks, and that means putting things together sometimes. So this is it. It's not very big, doesn't look like there's a lot going on there, but it's basically a, a four and three quarter wide by 10 and a half inches long, about an uh, inch and an eighth thick. So what they do is they flame cut this out, then they send it to the blancher grinder, and that's how I get it. So the first thing I do is I square it up, pick up the center, and off we go. So let's take a look at the original drawing for this. Um, this was the drawing that I was given, and we've got a little section view. Uh, the big thing that's got my attention here are these D-shaped holes. Not that they're that uh, uh, crazy, but you're going to see in a minute why. Now, notice the way this is dimensioned, um, how we're going from here to here to here to here to here. But we really don't know if that's symmetrical to here to here to here. All right, so we'll cover that in a second. But what we have here is um, four half 13 socket head cap screw uh, counter bores and clearance drills. Uh, I like what he did there. Uh, four places, drill and counter bore for a half 13 socket head. Well, I know that's a 17 30 seconds drill for clearance and a 780 diameter, 780 thousandths diameter by 530 thousandths deep counter bore. We've got two half inch dowel pins that he wants a 501 through that slip fit. And that's this is what we'll mount right to our machines. Our, our machines have this pattern on them. So uh, some eighth inch dowel pin holes, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, you'll, you can you can see there's that version, and then this is what I do for myself I clean it up. <laughs> I just like it like this. It's just much more uh, easy. It's just easier for me to see this way. I pick out the center and I just measure everything. These are called ordinate dimensions. All right. Um, I, for me, it's just easier to read than that. All right. That's just my preference. So let's go back to um, the D-shaped holes again. So what do we have here? We have the D-shaped hole, which is going to be the female pocket. All right. And then I've got these inserts that are going to go in there. All right. Well, the toolmaker in me, who has put things together um, uh, many times, knows the first problem is going to be these radii here. Because he's got the radius in the corner of the pocket called out at 94 thousandths, 330 seconds. And the same thing on the uh, insert. Well, as you can see, I left it on there just to show you that, but I whacked that right off, okay? when I, I have to machine this flat on anyways, which brings up another subject, but um, we're not even going to contend with that. Nobody's going to see this, all right? This, uh, this head is going to cover the hole anyways. So um, you could say, well, Phil, why don't you just make this radius a little smaller, all right? For clearance, why even fight with it? Just chamfer that right off, and then uh, we'll find out that's the the easiest way to not have to deal with it all right so again here's the uh, issue I'm having here they want this D shape to press fit in to the holes the D shaped holes all right so if you've ever watched any of my videos uh, the big thing for me is that um, slip fit is a thousands oversized hole and press fits a thousands undersized hole so I'm thinking I got a thousands to work with here all right if I blow this at all I see they're going to drop in and pop right out of the fixture every time they use it, or I'm going to pound this thing in and ruin it. So the way I'm going to control that press fit is by this flat. All right. So after I machined the D-shaped holes, I get a measurement here and figure out how big is it. All right. And I checked a, a few of them to make sure they were repeating. Well, they came out about a thousandths big. All right. That's fine. So I, now I know on this 250 dimension, I'm going to make it 250 two because it's a thou big that's 251 and we're going to add a press fit and hope this works all right it's always the, the beauty of building things so that's what they look like the plugs look like when i get them now i'm thinking how am i going to hold on to these and put this flat on so i can measure it i thought about standing it up and using the end of an end mill but then you can't measure it uh, i thought about grinding them but then they won't get a sharp corner all right so um here's what i came up with all right that's what it looks like when it's done all right and how do they hold on to it? I uh, used one of my little 45 degree angle plates, set it on a parallel I happen to have as the right height, and uh, I was able to um, let's take another look at that. All right, does that make sense to you? 
So now I can walk right around this. All I had to do is put the chamfer on, the flat chamfer, and now it's sticking up enough. I can measure it. There you go. So uh, I'm happy with that. But uh, uh, now comes the nerve-wracking part of having to put it, uh, put the parts into the fixture itself. First, I do want to say I indicated every one of these in. There was only eight of them. I wanted to make sure they were perfect. They were all within a thousands, but I wanted to make sure that uh, each one was the um, uh, same size. And uh, I'm glad I did that. As you can see, we got a pretty good fit, all right? So if we go to the next slide, this is going to be me in action here. Okay. Nice little brass bar there. You can see I'm not lifting it more than a couple inches. I'm just tapping right in. And I'm very pleased with that fit. I did not pound them in, but they're not coming out. All right, so that's victory number one. But Houston, we have a problem. They're not sitting flat. They're not going all the way down to the fixture. Now, why is that? That's irritating. I can get four thousandths under there with my handy-dandy feeler gauge. Now, this is a typical issue that a toolmaker would have, all right? Well, here's the issue. See that? When they turn them up on the lathe, they got about a 15 thousandths radius in the corner. That's what's holding me up. All right, so how are we going to get around that? Well, we're going to push those other two plugs back out and put a chamfer around my D-shaped holes. That takes care of that problem, all right? Now, the next fun uh, uh, project, part of this, is this uh, dowel pin. It's an eighth-inch dowel pin that they want me to grind down to 30 thousandths diameter. Right? 30 thousandths back at uh, 16th of an inch. So you'll see I've crossed out the 750 overall dowel pin length, and I made it uh, 971. Well, that's a weird number. Well, basically, a couple of reasons. I grabbed a one-inch dowel pin out of the crib, four, or four of them, because that's the only we need. Um, and then I touched off both ends just to make sure they were nice and flat because you know dowel pins have a little radius on the ends but I wanted them all the same length so I could hold the height and here's what we have here see that and these are my own dimensions here he wants these to stick out 288 thousandths so I need to I, I, I ground these uh, pins down so they're nice and flat so they all hit at the same length at the bottom of the hole I hope that makes sense all right so basically all I had to do is adjust how far I reamed it uh, just to make sure I got the right stick out. No big deal. The plate's thick enough. I could go deeper. So we've made a couple executive decisions so far, right? We chamfered the uh, outside of the plugs, and now we're uh, making the dolphins a little different. I'll show you why, though. I got to grind these things, and I want to hang on to them in this little guy. A little super wee block, I believe those are called. And that'll fit into my whirly jig, as you'll see in a second. There you go. All right. So I've got to grind these pins down. I'm using an 80-grit wheel. And the reason for that is, um, you know when you're using, uh, working on small parts, you use a small end mill, right? Well, you can on a grinding wheel. They're all the same diameter, right? So you, you get around things like working on small integrate grinds like this by upgrading uh, uh, the, uh, the grit number. So instead of using a 46 grit or a 60, I went to an 80, all right? Um, 100 I thought was going to be a little too fine. It would probably burn the parts. So the 80 was the right choice, all right? So that's what that setup looks like. And there's another view of it. Now it's done. Now you can see uh, I also wanted that longer pin. I had something to hang on to, and I put a little magnet back here for a stop. So I didn't have to pick up each one. Super happy with that, the way that came out. And this is what they look like uh, sitting on a little magnet here. And they all came out within a thousandth in length. Very happy camper. Now how are we going to pound these things in? without bending the 30 thousandths diameter. Well, I made up a little punch. I just drilled a 40 thousandths hole in a piece of 3 eighths cold roll and punched them in there, all right? So that's that's how that worked. Okay, so again, we want to make sure we have this uh, 288 height, which isn't super critical. I'll show you at the end why, but how do we do? Oh, 288 and a couple tenths, all right? <sighs> Relief all the way around here. All right, so let's see what we have here. That's the finished product. I'm weeping right now. There should be violin music playing. It's so good. It should be in the Louvre. 
All right, only kidding, maybe. And that's a uh, nice picture. Uh, I took uh, this is the part that's going to go on this, uh, over these inserts. You see that little hole there? That's what's going to index onto that pin. So we'll see how long it lasts. Now, I will say, I know this, I've been recording videos long enough, that uh, while there was a lot of great information here, A, you might do something differently. Uh, B, sometimes these videos give you a lot of information and also generate a lot of questions. So fire away, be polite. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you found that informative, and we'll see you on the next one.